Hello, hello. Welcome to the Crypto Basic Podcast slash Cryptocurrency Fun. Okay, hey, I'm here now. Hey, sorry. Hey, welcome. <laughs> wow. Okay, so I was literally doing a full intro and I thought that you guys just weren't talking. So I'm like going on, on and on. And then I realized I wasn't, I was talking to myself. So apparently we needed to be in the, uh, the, the app rather than the web based Discord. <laughs> All right, so, so what do we? I, I couldn't even hear you guys. So what do we? What do we talked about so far? We we'll just give a little intro. No, no, we were literally just waiting to get started, waiting for you to hop on. Uh, wow. I am sensing, I think, a little bit of background noise. Um, it sounds like a like a tea kettle on your side, Brent. <laughs> I don't know if you can recognize what is causing what? that noise, but um, uh, no, uh, oh, you know what? All right, it sounds like maybe hey, it's the uh, tea kettle crying in the background. Yeah, that is. Uh, Are you making? Have... No I am quieter than the other two. Hmm. I guess I could increase my gain. Let me see. I feel like that's pretty common, Cream. Did I uh, handle the? the all mic? right. So, Davey, let me know if this is better. One, two, three. For, for those of you guys that are just tuning in and you're kind of curious what's going on, uh, we are going to cover some stories from the R Cryptocurrency subreddit. We're going to talk about them as a team, discuss them out loud, and then we're going to field some questions afterwards. And we would like to make this a weekly reoccurring event um, Tuesdays at 11 a.m. So this is our first run and we're hoping it goes smoothly and we appreciate <laughs> you guys for showing up. Yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, smoothly from here on out, which <laughs> uh, obviously the first seven minutes haven't gone too smooth. But it's all good. We're getting started. We're learning here. So listen, one of the questions, experience. You said, what is this about? I think Mike answered that question. This is gonna be a weekly live podcast format style thing where we're covering the bigger stories in our cryptocurrency, the comments, the people. We answer some questions. Maybe you guys in the second half get to jump in and contribute. Um, and as far as who we are, well, obviously nobody important, obvi <laughs> or you would have done already. <laughs> but we have a podcast. It's the Crypto Basic Podcast, and we do something like this every week on Fridays. We have a flagship episode. So this is basically our weekly format, targeted specifically for our cryptocurrency. We're creating this kind of on the fly with you guys. So if anybody has any feedback or ideas or questions or whatever, jump in spam the chat let's talk about it you know uh this is a work in progress <laughs> about 100k crypto basic coin nice hey we're working on that <laughs> well the total supply <laughs> is zero so good luck <laughs> all right so um you want to give a couple more minutes for people to get in or you guys want to get started with uh, some stories let's just go yeah we're let's good. go all right let's, uh, let's, let's start talking uh, let's start talking with the one that got me the most hyped <laughs> over the weekend or over the week yeah. that got me all excited. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What was the top story of the week? India BitConnect head is arrested. How many of you guys were celebrating <laughs> when you heard that? Wahoo! Um, well, I, I was celebrating until I read a little bit more into it, but still, like, it's so awesome to watch BitConnect people go down. So, so the, and it was even more amazing to read the comments on the, on the post because every single comment was... A different version of Carlos Matos going crazy. Yeah. Okay. So let's catch people up just in case anybody didn't read that story. So one of the top stories that we had on our cryptocurrency this week specifically was about this gentleman named Divesh Darji, right? This is one, he was supposed to be the head of BitConnect in Asia. So hundreds of millions, I mean, tens of millions of dollars, obviously, right? And as he's flying from Dubai to India, he gets arrested in the airport. So now, of course, all the stories are going out. Oh, the head of BitConnect got arrested. The head of BitConnect got arrested. Um, we don't. Oh, there we go. Samsung Galaxy Pro. Good move. That's probably something we should get in the habit of posting the story immediately. <laughs> I knew we should have got the link to put him on the outline for, for a reason. <laughs> But we couldn't think that far ahead this morning. All right. So, but what Brent was saying, anytime you hear a BitConnect story, we we're reading the top comments, right? The top, top comment was something different but literally comment number two my wife still don't believe me <laughs> top comment number three no 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 <laughs> top comment number four what am i gonna do Co top comment number five that's a scam <laughs> oh snap brent you got the audio board nice 
Yeah, I, I pulled the soundboard up. So inside the podcast, we don't have a whole lot of random sounds that we do, but 60% of them are Carlos. So <laughs> no, no, no. Something bad about a coin will run out with a... <laughs> but um, yeah, so this here, it, it's gr- it was great to watch this happen. It was great to watch this occur in the subreddit. Unfortunately, as I looked into this, like this guy isn't actually one of the like uh, he's not the BitConnect head. He was just the most vocal like promoter of BitConnect in India. He was the crypto Nick of India, kind of. He was he, he. We still don't know who the founders of BitConnect were. We don't know how to find them. So hopefully someday somebody can figure that out. But all right, I have a question for you guys because since everything here relates to Carlos Matos. What do you think would be the public reaction to Carlos Matos being arrested? Would that be like a positive reaction Ooh. or is there some kind of weird like reverse psychology way in which he's now so iconic that we all kind of secretly, you know, want him to not get arrested? What? No, I think the entire especially the crypto community would rejoice and then anybody that's like not willing to throw this guy under the bus probably isn't smart enough to really know fully what's going on with the story anyways so it's not going to affect them really i don't i don't see i don't see that being a thing hang on hold on i I actually don't know how happy i would be to see carlos arrested he's uh i don't know what his like role was or how much bitconnect he had he may have just lost more money than anybody else who knows because he was there like right when they were about to go down so i don't know what he was in like how much he actually got back out of it but like yeah i have he's like the he's like that person that you have a soft spot in your heart for even even though they're like really stupid or he could have just been a paid chill to go on tv to just promote something he doesn't give a shit about because it was profitable for him like I, we don't know the we don't know what goes on behind the scenes i don't i don't think that this guy deserves any sort of a break all right so here's the thing since we don't get to do this uh, whenever we do our normal podcast, because it's just the three of us, and here we have a live audience, I do want to just kind of put our finger on the pulse of the audience. So if you're listening, <laughs> if you're listening, just a quick yes or no, would you like to see Carlos Matos arrested? If you're interested, you just post in the chat, yes or no, so just we can get a quick glance. Let's see. Carlos is innocent. Yes, no, yes, no. Community service is pretty solid. Matos custom <laughs> emoji. <laughs> I, like, I like community service <laughs> the much it would be a free Carlos. okay so i think this confirms that this is a more uh controversial topic <laughs> that's very surprising very nuanced. To me. <laughs> he has an instagram where he like goes about his day and says like carlos mato stuff I, I don't know like it was either a guy that looked exactly like him and sounded like him and was doing a parody instagram or it actually was him i can't remember but i looked into it a while ago and he's just like, hey, 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 getting ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for, for those of you that don't uh, listen to the podcast that are not our listeners and are just here from our cryptocurrency, Brent, like, Brent loves this guy so much. His ringtone is literally Carlos Matos singing. Like, yes. I'm not even exaggerating. His phone, if you call him, it just starts, it's Carlos Matos. <laughs> <laughs> I did a little bit of a fat Albert thing there. Sorry, my my uh, yeah, impersonations get confused. All right, so so for those who may not be uh, listeners of the podcast, Kareem takes every opportunity to make fat jokes. So he, even though he was making fun of my ringtone, it was a it became a fat Albert joke because. Uh, <laughs> <that's what he does. laughs> yeah, well, no, my impersonations are just bad. Also, uh, my accent comes out sometimes, so it's it's hard. I'm trying to impersonate on a second second language here. Um, Anyway, I think the conclusion is we all want to see BitConnect fail, but for some reason, uh, it's a little more controversial when it comes to Carlos. I think he's a little more iconic in a weird way. So, Yeah, I've been racking my brain to think of somebody that I think is a good comparison, like outside of crypto. Somebody who was like, they're, they're like a celebrity that you... That you love to make fun of, but you know they're crappy. Dennis Rodman. I, like, I don't. Oh yeah, Dennis oh, Rodman. That's a pretty that. good one. That's what? a pretty. Yeah. But he didn't, didn't. He didn't do anything crazy illegal, did he? I mean, oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> OJ Simpson. Yeah, OJ Simpson. Whoa, I think. Whoa. I, I I think most people 
actually or don't aren't split on OJ Simpson. I think most of us uh, <laughs> innocent. <somebody laughs> well, said. I mean, I considered this Carlos guy. There was no option we would be saying anything positive about him at any point in our in our talks together. So, you know, I'm reaching a little bit here. Uh, oh, that's a that's a great question. Did I miss an intro portion of this? We're kind of curious. Uh, all right, so we're just going to cover quasi the main stories. You did miss the intro. Just a reminder, we're talking about Carlos Matos right now and the <clears> BitConnect <throat> story because the biggest story of the week was this guy from BitConnect getting arrested. But we're going to talk about some of the other major stories, which that might be a good transition point, guys. The, the audience telling us what else are we going to talk about? <laughs> yeah, we're going to ruin the rest of it by talking like kind of serious. I don't know what we just uh, we just gave us like the, the comedy 15 minutes of the first half, but um the the rest of the stories are you know we're just gonna kind of talk about yeah there should we grab some memes i don't think so i we'll we'll keep going on the oh i just saw uh lummy flux in the chat he's uh yeah a little shout out to lummy flux there uh mvp the basic listener yeah, MVP of a lot of podcasts, awesome. actually. Yeah, exactly. I I thought we were special at first, but it turns yeah. out no, he's, he's just like a, secretly like a master connector of all podcasts and YouTube channels on the he, planet. He probably owns all podcasts. The <laughs> yeah, software, the, the what, the RSS feeds. Yeah, and oh, by the way, uh, another thing: if you have, if you are listening and you start thinking of any questions or topics, the way that we envisioned this going, because. Just to be clear, we're here from 11 to noon, and we're thinking about covering the major stories until like 11.30, 11.40, but we want to open it up on that second half so that if anybody wants to hop on and have a question or you guys have a topic for debate or something we missed. So if you start thinking of anything like that, just know that the format's pretty open, and we want the audience more and more engaged on the second half of the show. So keep that in mind. But and right. also, if you want to like really get Kareem fired up, you want to make your question political. If you want to really <laughs> get Mike fired up, make the question really existential. And if you want to get me fired up, just say that like food is not worth eating or something. <laughs> yeah, that that more or less sounds right. <laughs> All right. All so right. so the second story that we had that we had pulled out to to take a look at uh, is going to be like way sobering comparatively, but. I think it was important. Coin Market Cap took out their API, uh, or, they, or they didn't take it out. I'm sorry. They stopped allowing their API to be free, which is kind of a big blow. Like I feel like a lot of people built on top of the Coin Market Cap API, different different sites right. and different apps and that kind of thing. Let me stop you real quick. Um, any chance that you can explain for anybody who might not be familiar what an API is? So, like, what Ooh. this means for Coin Market Cap to remove their uh, API? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll try my best. So the one of the things about us is none of us know how to code or anything like that. So to the best of my understanding, APIs are the way that different apps and different websites will interact with each other and kind of form integrations almost. So when you see different integrations with the different apps that you have, like let's say you have Trello and it has integration with Google Drive, they're using an API to accomplish that. So the API on CoinMicroCap was mostly just to grab the prices and the price history of all of the uh, uh of the cryptocurrencies out there nice uh, up to and including you know like bitconnect <laughs> that was the i i've had a little bit of an issue with coin market cap for a while and this the fact that they all of a sudden started charging very exuberant prices as far as i could tell like up it gets up to like 700 dollars a month to have access to their api they 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 had bitconnect banners up to and including like well Kind of lost you there, yeah, we lost down. you for a second there, Brent. So they Just obviously weren't doing any sort of like they had uh, BitConnect banners yeah, up until up to like, and including. Uh, yeah, they, up to and including when BitConnect went down. Uh, Bit, you know, BitConnect was was finally going through, tumbling downward, and I believe that the banner was still on the site, and the coin is still on the site. So I, you can still like get the data. I, I'm not sure how I feel about that because I guess you should know what it's trading for if it's trading somewhere, but um. Yep. So anyway, that was uh, that's a that's a big story. I think that's it shows some of the dangers of of big centralized companies having control over a certain part of a space. So if you're looking for alternatives, I don't we're not like affiliated with any of these. I just happen to use them. Livecoinwatch.com, coincap.io are two that I happen to go to to check prices rather than uh, coin market cap. And I have even before this. Yeah. And somebody mentioned here in the chat that someone posted a CSV file that had like the last five years of prices. Thank you very much. I'm putting the link there because mm -hmm. yeah, like somebody actually went through the 
work of facilitating oh, yeah, that was, this. Uh, the user's name was Neophyte. That was like, yeah, that was super cool that they posted that. Yeah, absolutely. So real quick, so, guys, I, I just have a question on this topic. Do you think that um, using so many free APIs, what does that do to a website? Does it, um, is there more server costs? Is it more expensive to, to host these? Like, w what is the downsides to these APIs? Uh, you know, that's a good question, Mike, but I don't think that this had to do with the downside or burden for coin market cap as much as they realize that they're in like a centralized gatekeeper position and they want to just maximize the revenue. You know, it was like coin market cap became such a staple for everybody, even though there are other tracking sites, like, let's be real. Almost everybody goes to coinmarketcap.com. So, um, I don't see any personal reason why they shouldn't have the freedom to monetize all of that. Uh, no, of course. No, well, yeah, of course they should. It, they just, okay. it was. I, I feel like this is. I, so far, I felt like this has been a negative response. Well, it might be a negative well, response is. because it happened too suddenly or because they're charging too much. Like, just because they have the ability to monetize doesn't mean that uh, people aren't going to respond negatively if they feel that they're being overly greedy. Yeah. Yep, and obviously we don't use their API in any way. But if you know, if we did, we would start looking for other solutions, or maybe we would just pay for it. I don't know. So I I don't know enough from the developer side to know if it's worth it. But the the other, hopefully, the other sites will either step up or and continue to be free, or they will step up with just a more reasonable pricing plan. But I, and again, I don't know what these calls do because you know there uh, there's a, a a website called Zapier that you can create your own little like integrations with APIs and you you do have to pay like kind of per use on that and they provide a great service those things work great so it's just a it's just a matter of was this was it the right move to dump this and if they're going to use this model they should probably get rid of the you know the bitconnect ads <laughs> they should definitely get rid of the BitConnect Act. All right. For those of you that didn't listen to the podcast, we were pretty critical of Coin Market Cap when they were still like even after BitConnect got exposed as the scam that most observant people knew it was from the beginning, they were still running ads for it. So, you know, especially now, if they have other monetization schemes, then for sure um that shouldn't be accepted. And I also want to bring attention for anybody who might not currently be on the chat because some good points are being made. Um Elia23 points out that yes, it is costing coin market cap a lot of money to host those APIs. And that there are, you know, Queasy mentions that there are other free APIs, but Tivo points out that the basic level for like just entry level is $79 a month for a quote unquote hobbyist account to be able to use the API. I mean like that's pricey. That's obviously, that's what most services charge somebody for like professional. Like, I don't know if you try to find a service that maybe helps you with your social media management or something like that, the highest level is still usually less than $80 a month. So but what are people using these APIs for? Well, like, one, of the, one of the ones that I wonder is, I think it might be like the one that we used for the contest, Mike, for the portfolio contest. Right. Like something like that. I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. um, Brent. Do I don't you know, know man. if that site used the API from Coin Market Cap. Brent's muted right now. I don't know if oh, that's on purpose. Brent disappeared. Well, you know what? Brent's the the worst contributor out of the three of us. <laughs> so I guess it would make sense for him. He probably had to. He actually probably had to take a phone call. Oh yeah. That um, makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. Right, anyway. Well, anyway, I, we won't hammer too much on the API. It's just there might there's a negative response maybe because it happens suddenly or because people feel like it's too expensive but at the end of the day it is a service that they provide it is something that costs them money and as you said mike we can't really fault them for just trying to monetize their business model fair enough all right give me a quick oh hey, i'm here i'm back all right sorry i had to i had to go sign uh sign sign my life away on a contractor paper <laughs> we're good to go so um so we did we, we basically finish, I, i'm sorry up. so i'm coming in here we'll wrap that up all right so the the next big story was the how much money has actually been stolen in crypto in the like there was an estimate that in the first five months of 2018 it was 1.1 billion dollars and that is a lot of okay but hold a on a second in context 
all of that stolen money is now worth like 25% of what it used to be worth. So we should <laughs> That's <be> true. <laughs> so, you know what? Joke's on those thieves. Yeah, you should have stolen my dollars. Yeah. Right. The entire market cap of crypto is like 200 million right now. And we're talking about 1.1 billion getting stolen in the first half of the year. Like What? 200 million? No way. No, wait, no it's 200, 200 billion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're up by Dude, 200, 200 million. million. No, it, it, the crypto market isn't uh, uh, movie yeah. pass. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <God>. man. <laughs> so, so and- speaking of which, you can buy movie, the movie pass entire market cap for less than you can buy a two bedroom apartment. I don't know if anybody knows that. <laughs> yes. Brent, there, Brent- there, there was a typo on the R cryptocurrency thing that said the entire crypto market is only 227 million. And I just switched up the million and billion for a second. So. I do apologize for that. Yeah. <laughs> I usually know better. <laughs> uh, usually. Usually. Anyway, uh, so Brent still... is a movie pass expert, by the way. <laughs> he is has been following their business from inception to now that he feels like he might be able to swoop in and buy it and become the CEO. He's got all <laughs> the money under the mattress, just waiting for the market cap of movie pass to get low enough. Yeah, movie passes. Uh, I I mean, I loved using it, and I just I, I actually I canceled it. Why are we talking about movie pass? I'm sorry. We 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 compared. I know that the that's movie, what, that's where the chat's is, going. Yeah, they did this awesome thing where they did a 251 to one reverse split so that their price wouldn't fall so far that they would get delisted from exchanges, and then in like two days it was still the exact same price. Yeah, no, that's pretty brutal. That's pretty brutal, but you know, if your business model is to lose money every day, it's going to be tough to maintain. <laughs> it's, it's All right, so actually, model. I do have a question. I, I, I'm wondering if you guys saw um, there were two separate posts done by Venezuelan uh, citizens that experienced the uh, the change in the peso. We, we talked about this in the podcast a few weeks ago that it was going to come up. Did you guys see any of the posts about like? How much, like how the banks were shut down, the ATMs were shut down while they did this change? Yeah, there was like a 12 hour blackout, I think I saw. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Just first of all, right off the bat, like being blacked out from all your money for you can't access any of it. And then, you know, the entire like demonetization, I was, I was looking at an article where it was showing like how much cash was needed for everyday goods. And the pictures are ridiculous. I'm, I'm actually going to post some of them here. Like, this is how much cash before this change where they're trying to, um, you know, reduce the amount of currency in circulation. This is how much it would cost. To do- <laughs> oh, I'm that trying Elliot to put uh, no, no money for 12 hours. I couldn't manage. <laughs> no money it, for 12 hours. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Oh, I, apparently, I can't add pictures, but you know what? I'll just add the link. Here is a link that has a bunch of pictures of everyday items like tomatoes and chicken and toilet paper and how much cash was needed just to buy each item. So you can see right there in the in in the screenshot, like probably what looks like millions of dollars, like winning the World Series of Poker just to buy some tomatoes. <laughs> like seriously, Mike, tell me this is not like it final was, table it, uh, so, like cash so material. So just as a thought experiment here. Wouldn't it just be cheaper to use the money as toilet paper? Oh man, but do you ever That's been like a dream of mine wiping my Have ass you ever actually bill? like looked at money though? You want to put money on your ass? Like listen, I don't even awful. like cheap toilet paper, bro. I need aloe vera, charmin, double layered. I'm not wiping aloe my vera, out. like all the all the buzzwords all for the toilet the, paper. Yes. If if the logo is not either a cushy bear. Or, or a, a very fluffy puppy, then I, I don't know. I'm not interested. Like the worst thing is going to somebody's house and they have like the roughest toilet paper. I mean, like literally that's something that you skimped out on. Come on. Yeah. Of all the things you could be cheap on. If yeah. Kareem's telling you to spend top dollar, you better spend top dollar. Yeah. You guys know I'm uh, nitty. Okay. I am not one to spend money unnecessarily. Uh, all my extra income, is, you know, trying to save it up. But toilet paper. Yeah. I'm going to get the good stuff. <laughs> So, I don't know if I should even do this, but I, there's I, I've got a story for because we're talking about toilet paper. I'm going to throw this out there real quick. I'm going to make it fast, right? I was at a house at my friend's aunt's house when I was like 18 years old, 
and I was in the bathroom and they ran out of toilet paper. So I, I, I looked, I'm looking around, I'm looking under the sink and I can't find any new toilet paper. And, uh, I'm like too embarrassed to ask them for more toilet paper, right? So I open, <laughs> so I open the the bottom of the sink again, and I'm like, "Oh, there's wet wipes. Great, I'll use those." And this is before I'd even realized that wet wipes were basically the best thing on planet Earth. Like, so I I pull out the I pull out their wet wipes. I use one. I wipe it. They were bleach wipes. They were not <laughs> wet wipes. So I wiped my ass with bleach, and it was. So now picture me jumping. There was no, this was no there was no shower. So I'm up <clears throat> on the sink trying to like wash out what I've done to myself, and it was very. Uh... <laughs> Brett, you're the man. I love these stories. <laughs> the worst, hey Mike. The worst part of the story is that even after he realized that there were beach wipes. You know it takes more than one wipe, so he's like, "Oh, of course, what is I gotta go with it." <laughs> yeah, he probably <laughs> flipped it over to the other side. Uh, this sounds like a shit storm of a situation. Oh my god, <laughs> Elliot twenty three. Yes, yes. <laughs> if you guys I, continue to I'm join us for these, it'll always here. be a shit storm. Yeah, uh, Elliot twenty three. You've officially been awarded twelve thousand crypto basic tokens. Um. Boom! There you go. They're in your imaginary wallet. All <laughs> all funny comments will be awarded crypto basic tokens <laughs> to be released soon. We, <laughs> I know one of our competitive podcasts does have tokens, at least one. <laughs> uh, they're really easy to make, but yeah. Sorry about that. I I just we started talking about different. So anyway, back to the the story, which was that we I guess you could in theory wipe your ass with the with the with the bills of Venezuela instead of buying the toilet paper to do so. But Kareem, you're saying even though in, in a, even in a hyperinflated economy where you're scrounging money to eat tomatoes, you're still going with ultimate quilted plush uh, fair trade gluten-free toilet paper? That is correct, Brent. <laughs> that is correct. I don't want any gluten in my <clears throat> toilet paper, so no thank you on the bills. Oh, and by the way, uh, B8 is asking when our ICO is uh, duh, running a single ICO is a sucker's game. We will have eight ICOs spread out <laughs> over the next two years. So we'll just let you know. Uh, you can give us money basically perfect, at any time. Perfect quarterly increments. You can just donate every three months. Yeah, yeah. the supply will be uh, determined. TBA. Later. Yeah, TBA. 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 <laughs> yeah. um, all right, guys. Any, any more comments here about Venezuela other than the fact that this situation is terrible? Uh, side note. Um, <clears throat> It seems like Dash and Nano, I mean, I know we don't like to talk about specific coins and just a heads up, we never show specific points, uh, coins. We like crypto in general. We like discussing all projects in general. We're going to be very open about some of the stuff we think is trash, like BitConnect and stuff like that. But without trying to push the specific coin, uh, every time I hear about Venezuela, it seems like Nano and Dash have been the two main coins that have managed to really infiltrate that community and really uh, start you know, like a lot of the reason why we got interested in cryptocurrency, right? The idea that people would have an outlet outside of the government um, to, you know, have their assets, have their money not basically robbed by a couple of corrupt bureaucrats. So, you know, a yeah. shout out to those two currencies that are actually, you know, making that happen. Yeah, I don't, I, I, there may be other currencies that are helping in Venezuela. They're just the ones that are getting the most press right now. And, um, and I, I, to your point, Kareem, I also wanted to mention that we probably didn't even say this. We almost never talk about price unless it's in a facetious way, because like we know nothing <laughs> about trading and and how to look at the the different triangles that you need to draw and that kind of thing to to steal Doug Polk's term. But the uh, yeah, we so we'll avoid price completely. But the um, I'm sure there's other coins doing good things for Venezuela. They are the two that are getting that that one nano donation. Uh, it it was something along the lines of they were able to feed so I don't you know I'm making up numbers but like 700 people I know we talked about it on the flagship but and 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 at one point the the one nano was equal to an entire monthly salary I think yeah uh yeah yeah I I believe like the person who was able to raise a bunch of nano in order to buy groceries when they did the oh. conversion it was like for every nano they were getting like you said it was like a month's uh. A month's salary, you know. And, uh, and as the, a, go ahead. I, sorry, one of the one of the chat users said that uh, the a friend of theirs in Venezuela hadn't had an apple for twenty five years, 
because they're banned. And the reason is they represent America. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I wonder about that, though, because Maduro has only been around for a lot less than 25 years. And even Chavez before that hasn't been around for 25 years. And the government before Chavez wouldn't have bound, uh, wouldn't have banned Apple. So I'm not 100 percent sure <laughs> if. Wow. wow. I mean, Look at Kareem just. Listen, just I'm just saying maybe he hasn't like, OK, this it could be true that he banned apples, but it's not necessarily true that this guy didn't eat apples 25 years ago because of the ban. <laughs> like, maybe he right. just wasn't into apples, and now that they're banned, he's like, what the <laughs> fuck? Citation. I want an apple. <laughs> uh, but like, for like, those you, Hold on. For those of you that aren't aware, uh, Kareem grew up in Colombia, so these, these South American stories have a little bit of a special place in his heart, so just so everyone knows where he's coming from. Yeah, did, did you eat any apples when you were growing up? Uh, yes, we had apples in Colombia, and I'm not trying to brag, but I had like many different colors of apples: green, <laughs> red. We have them all. <laughs> but look, it is important to note as we're discussing this Venezuela thing, especially Mike, since you brought up that I'm Colombian. Uh, it is a reminder that this can happen almost anywhere. You know, a lot of times when we're reading about stories uh, regarding hyperinflation or something, sometimes it feels like it's so distant. It's in a society where if you live in Europe or the United States, you almost feel like you couldn't be affected. But having grown up in Colombia and knowing that Venezuela was a country full of professionals, uh, you know, a capitalist economy with good enterprise. It had a, you know, middle class, it's got natural resources. It had so much. And yet under the wrong conditions, it can just topple into madness. And now you have a lack of safety, a lack of resources. The middle class has been completely destroyed. So I guess my point here without getting too, you know, it's sad and depressing and everything, this really could happen anywhere. So the fact that we have a technological revolution that is creating an outlet, uh, you might think you don't need it, but we never know. You you never know what direction uh, the world can take. And Venezuela was not a struggling or a third world country or whatever 20 years ago. So, you know, it's sad to see them like this and 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 I hope that they can turn it around. Yep, super sad. Yep, sorry, and I get that an apple out. is America's, you know, because the apple is like the opposite of what's happening to Venezuela. Apple is the fir world's first trillion dollar or uh, yeah, trillion dollar company, and Venezuela is doing whatever the opposite of that is. So, yeah. uh, side note: I don't know if this is true, but I heard that Steve Jobs named his company Apple in part because he wanted it to show up ahead of his old company Atari in the phone book. I don't know if that's true or not, but I just... I believe that 100%. The original search engine optimization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. I, I mean, my last name, for example, is LAA. Like, I've always known that, like, by alphabetical, I'm always the first A, so it's easy when I'm, you know, in lines, organizing things, whatever. I mean, if you're making business, you prob that's probably something that's very desirable. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why you see, like, every locksmith in a town is called, like, a one locksmith or something like that there's there's some because they're like one of the the local businesses that have been around for a long time that are still existing so they always have like their 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 yeah the original seo in the in the phone book i i barely even remember using a phone book i mean i'm 33 years old i don't i've used it almost none that's it that's an interesting yeah interesting seo thought. used to be a lot simpler now that we have podcasts and we've actually had to like make an effort to be found mm -hmm. online and stuff. I wish it was as easy as, Oh, just start your name with an A that way. You're the first <laughs> one to show up. End the story. Yeah. How easy can it be? Uh, it turns <laughs> It turns out like just calling us crypto basic as opposed to crypto space basic might've been a really stupid decision. And we <laughs> didn't think about that. That might've been the equivalent yeah. of calling yourself Z one locksmith. <laughs> so Brent, before we like, take that um the episode to like that second half or maybe we get some questions or we get some people to jump in you want to tell us a little bit about this Winkovoss gemini story yeah i was trying to read on this up on this right before we jumped in i saw it got posted about an hour ago it was gaining some traction in uh our cryptocurrency but it said that the Winklevoss twins were were kind of creating a uh something called the virtual commodity association and they had other u.s exchanges signed up i went to read the article there were no comments on it yet and i went to read the article and they didn't talk about any other exchanges they just said, yeah, there's other exchanges. It's cool. It's fine. So I don't know enough about that, but it is it, it's interesting if it's a if true. <laughs> interesting if true. Interesting if they're actually doing something and creating this virtual commodity association. 
as a self-regulating body. It's like uh, maybe like the PGA or the DCI or something like that, where they're just kind of deciding, hey, they're not putting regulations on us. Maybe if we present regulations to them, things will be a little bit easier. Um, but I have no idea of the veracity of that post. Um, you know, do I believe it's true? I don't. I have no idea. So I wish. I wish that was more fleshed out because, again, I like to do my research on both sides. I didn't have enough time to research that. I just thought it was an interesting to mention since it was kind of brand new. But my opinion is, um, if I'm if it's if it's happening, if that is a thing, it's probably good. I wish it wasn't led by Gemini because I've had some um, some personal issues with how they've been handling things, even though they used to be my primary onboarding ramp. So. So I'm, I'm banned from Coinbase and Gemini pissed me off. So I don't even know what I have left, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what I'll say, though. It's it's unlikely to be a completely fake story, in my opinion, obviously. Like you said, Brent, we didn't have time enough to research these stories. But if we didn't see the name of the other exchanges, it's also possible that they're trying to get that momentum rolling. And of course, they picked up tiny partners that are just happy to partner up with Gemini and something. Overall, though, I believe this story because I know that a self-regulatory body is something that they have been working towards because I think that the people in the industry that are smart and are looking ahead know that there has to be some form of regulation in this space. And self-regulation overall is going to be more nuanced and usually more intelligent than if we're just going to wait for, you know, congressmen that literally don't know anything about anything to just uh, pass arbitrary regulations. So, and as a side note, it in some industries, it works really well, right? Like whether you're talking about lawyers or, or doctors or specific types of medicine, there are tons of self-regulatory bodies where the industry itself starts to set certain standards. So I'm not saying that them doing this is going to maybe stop all of the regulations that the gov government will eventually pass because government's going to have to do its own things. But overall, for the major cryptocurrency businesses to get together and create like a um, standard and a standard of ethics, standard of conduct, uh, standard of technology and all that stuff, I think it'll be overall good. I'm not a huge fan of Gemini, but somebody does have to do it. Yeah, if they've got the if they've got the poll to kind of get everybody organized and get everybody together, that's uh, that's kind of cool. Uh, it might also be interesting to see if like Coinbase says, you know what? No, we're gonna make the the virtual virtual commodity association, and ours is gonna be better than yours, and they have a competing uh, back. That and sounds forth. healthy, right? No, yeah, it is. I I feel like it's gonna happen. So if or everybody just is like, no, you know what? Let's let's get in here. Let's do this. And maybe they've created it in such a in a nice way. In a perfect world, in a in a rosy future, in the utopian society, it would just be a DAO. But I we're not there yet. So yeah, that's probably a good point. Um, okay, so we do have 15 minutes left. Again, I, we know this is experimental, but does anybody have any questions or any topics that they feel like they may have missed? We might even like if you want to jump on voice or if you just want to ask via chat. Um, just when we created this, we envisioned the audience being able to kind of like jump in on that second half. When Moon, uh, well, it, we still have 332 days and 42 hours before Moon. So that answers that question. <laughs> Sometime this evening after sunset. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh wow. So I am now getting crushed by Mike in the portfolio contest, apparently. I thought Nano going crazy this week might have saved me. Um, we, we did this like, you know, I don't want to say dumb, but we did this contest like six months ago where we each picked a portfolio and, uh, and I made a really <laughs> stupid decision to add Bitcoin private to my portfolio <clears throat> without doing any research. It was this great learning experience where I was just like, man, I want, I wanted uh, Z classic in there, but they were forking into private. So I was like, ah, I'll take that. And, uh, it completely sunk my ship. And now I'm scared that I'm going to have to do the final, like, you know the final thing where I've got to go do something embarrassing. I'm up by thirteen dollars right now. So wait, Brent, did you remove me from the portfolio contest? No, it's it's no, a broken link. It, yeah, it's a broken. I don't know why it's, that that site is not working. That <laughs> all, right, all right. So here's here's what happened. So Kareem loses. Quick, yeah, no, real quick. So our cryptocurrency knows what's going on. Brent <clears throat> handles the IT, and he clearly sabotaged the website, knowing that some <laughs> of you might go and look because. The individual who is winning the portfolio contest. Kareem, your portfolio is $321 currently. 
uh, which is approximately like we are at 50 25 and 238 yes so yeah. so here, here's what happened when the portfolio contest started some of us believed that they were super smart smarter than the market and they were going to pick the best coins that were going to perform the best and then one of us believed i don't know shit so i'm just going to pick the best projects and that portfolio outperformed. The we also week. started this February 1st of 2018. <laughs> so yeah, those oh, numbers, yeah. we just told you we're from a thousand dollar original. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not exactly bragging if I'm Kareem, but he's definitely done a lot better than we have. Okay. So somebody asked thoughts on Bakht if it hasn't been brought up. Now, I believe Bakht is referring to the New York Stock Exchange's version of um, cryptocurrency listings, right? They're going to offer like. <laughs> Not ETFs uh, specifically, but um, we covered this on the flagship, right, Brent? It was the story about the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange. Basically, the whole time they were downplaying, they're like, oh, we're not going to jump into crypto. We're not going to jump into crypto. And then um, it just recently was announced that they've been basically working on this project. Uh, let me yeah. just make sure. Yeah. Well, the most interesting part about that project is that they've they've been talking about integrating with Starbucks. So here's one of the conversations that we've had a lot on the show, which is we hear about these random integrations with sites. We hear like, you know, Pornhub is taking Tron or, uh, or you hear about like a big site taking a crypto, but they aren't, even though they're a big site and they're one of the most visited sites, they're not a very large amount of internet transactions. So whereas one site like Amazon taking crypto would be a massive shift in how often it's being used for its intended purpose of being a currency. So something like Starbucks, which is massively transactional. Um, wait, it, it, yeah, it's it Verge, Tron, Zencash. One of these is not like the others. We, we felt we actually like Zencash <laughs> a lot. And uh, they, they ended up, it was kind of, yeah, it was like the only disappointing thing I'd ever found about Zencash was that they, other than you know the getting attacked, which I think they handled fine, was that they decided to partner with Pornhub and they they were number three in those coins. But I don't think anyway, it was a the, bad thing in hindsight. I just knew that we were concerned about it when the event happened. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want people talking about doing exactly what we just did there, which they Verge, Tron, and Zencash. Like I didn't want them to. <laughs> we do just that. didn't want to see those three names. That's all. But continue. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I was in the middle of making the point that that something like a Starbucks, if there's any way to make a payment with cryptocurrency with them, now we have a massive spike in adoption, like McDonald's taking it or um, it, or any piece of the puzzle creating a massive amount of transactions. I don't think we've had any, you know, the biggest thing that I can think of is Overstock.com, which is... I've I am like a massive online shopper, and I think I would say of my online purchases, Overstock is probably 025 percent of them. Like I've probably bought one thing on there. So, yeah, and also, Brent, it's important to know if I remember the story correctly. I don't think that Starbucks was just like a peripheral partnership, but it was something like I think it was Starbucks and Microsoft, along with ICE. That's the company that owns the New right, York ICE Stock is Exchange. The yeah. So the three of them are essentially partners in this new venture. And one of the things that we discussed, because somebody asked, okay, what, what do you guys think about Bach? It's kind of huge, honestly, because now you're talking about the New York Stock Exchange or the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange. That's massive from an investment perspective. You literally can't get bigger than that. From a retail perspective, you're talking about Starbucks, where again, whether you like them or not, whether you think it's just overpriced coffee for hipsters or you love it, it's still one of the most popular brands in the world. And Microsoft, a, a tech giant. So this, I think, is probably one of the most significant steps towards true, um, maybe not mass adoption in the sense of usage, but like real social penetration, you know, where now it's like, it's clearly here and it's clearly here to stay. It's in all the major players and now they're uh, trying to get involved. So my answer to what do we think about Bakht? I think it's a big deal when it does release. I don't know how good the service is going to be. A tech something. <laughs> tech giant. Is yeah, tech, tech. So I, I was trying to read an article that was actually posted in the chat earlier, but I've been only reading snippets. Uh, but basically the the CEO outlined kind of their their business model yesterday and how it was going to work and everything was going to be fully collateralized. Uh, it also just reading this very, very cursory 
glance in the middle of me trying to talk about wiping my ass with bleach. Um, <laughs> it looks like they may have a lot of Bitcoin already. Like they've uh, they've already created some sort of um, war chest to use. I'm not sure, but that's what that's kind of what I was getting reading between the lines there, which uh, which is just an, an interesting thought. So. Uh, does anyone want to actually like get on here and chat with us? <laughs> like, I don't know. I kind of uh, envisioned unmuting somebody at some point. But, yeah, if you guys want um, to, um, <clears throat> hey, raise your hand if you want to be unmuted, or you could just write your question via text. What is needed for ETF to approve cryptocurrency? I can chime in. Um, I am quasi. I've been in the server for a long time. I'm one of the moderators here too. Oh, um, boom. We didn't but, even have well, to do also, that. also poker player for sure. So I've been doing that for a while. So I, I'm digging the podcast and I'm digging you guys a lot too. Um, My man. For, ETF, yeah. <laughs> for ETF approval, I think there is only really um, the regulation thing. That's why they denied it the past couple of years. I've been in since 2014. And just every year there's like, you know, there's going to be an ETF this year. There's going to be an ETF this year. And um, it never happens. So I'm still not really holding out hope for this year. It'd be cool, but uh, just... Typically, people get excited and nothing happens. So let me ask you this, Quasi. Do you think, like on a scale of 1 to 10, how important of a step do you think ETF approval is in the first place? I think it's pretty game-changing. I recently watched Andreas' video on it, and I like his opinion on it. He kind of hates that we want it to happen. But in terms of price, it's, it's you know, the end-all be-all. Like, uh, price will go through the absolute roof, kind of like uh, gold. If you can just invest part of your retirement into, you know, like piece by piece and anyone has access to it, it it's definitely going to change the game. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And also being able to include it in retirement accounts, you know, like I think that yeah. for most uh, non big time investors, the first thing that you are told is, you know, max out your 401s, max out your IRAs, uh, max out anything that allows you to be able to take tax benefits off of your investments. Yeah. And I think that the more we can, uh, have cryptocurrency be a part of that asset class, then I agree with you that we're going to see a significant price fluctuation. For sure. And not everybody has like, um, like six grand to, you know, buy a Bitcoin with, but plenty of people who live paycheck to paycheck have, you know, like 200 grand in their retirement. And, you know, if one Bitcoin helps them just diversify a little bit, I think they'll do it if, you know, their financial guy tells them to. Yeah. One of the interesting things that we had, um, we had a, we had a Wall Street guy on the show. His name was Peter Walsworth. And he, he worked for Morgan Stanley and he did like an analysis that said that if you have like 5% crypto, it actually, or, or it, GBTC actually, I think is what he was analyzing. Mm -hmm. It lowered your overall risk, uh, risk profile because it's not correlated with the rest of the market. So yeah, yeah. it was like this extra asset class that helped you mitigate your risk, which was interesting. And another thing that to think sense. about like GBTC trades so much higher than what it represents. There's a massive, um, there's massive premium to adding it to your investment portfolio. So having some uh, competition to that is going to be, is going to be nice. Didn't and somebody just see... create another one of those or they, I, I thought there was another one improved that didn't have the same inflation. Yeah, it, it's not, um, it wasn't an ETF or it was, wasn't a trust. It was, or it was, uh, it was notes. It was kind of like bonds almost. I can't, uh, right. I can't remember the name of it, but it's, you buy a note and then you receive the Bitcoin later. Um, God, I ETP? can't remember. It's, it's an e, 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 ETP, e Brent. Read the chat. ETP. They're all screaming at us. They're like, ETP. Oh. They're like watching no, I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> And they know they're, the they're answer. The <laughs> watching me just like flounder through and struggle. So <laughs> yeah, ET, ETF adoption is is like almost the antithesis of what crypto is, but at the same time, it is going to have to have a massive upward uh, movement on the price. So, but, wait, I, I, but I don't know. I mean, why, I don't know enough. Why about do price so now. many people feel that, that it's the, I, I, I understand that it shouldn't be the focus, but do you really feel that it's like the antithesis? I mean, is it really like, it's going to open up the market to so many people that have no interest in getting in otherwise, unless somebody can do all the work for them. Yeah, yeah, but no, I, I guess, but it's not that, opening the, the market up to people being decentralized. Like they're, they still have to go through the U.S. stock exchanges to buy it. They have to, um, they, you know, I can't spend it. it. It's a, it's a share sitting somewhere. So, okay, you know, so gold isn't something you spend. So it's not, and and again, we're so far off from people spending Bitcoin on a daily basis or any other cryptocurrency that it may not 
that may that may be and like one of those philosophical arguments that isn't practical but all right so i want okay so somebody on the chat says well crypto was supposed to be not regulated by the government and i want to share what i don't know if this is going to be an unpopular opinion but here's what i'll say i agree that one of the promises of cryptocurrency is that it is a tool that we can use to circumvent um unjustified regulation but i don't necessarily think that all of crypto must be unregulated for it to fulfill its promise because if we accept the premise that crypto and blockchain are fundamental game-changing technologies, then they need to be a part of regular day existence. And that includes government, that includes business, that includes business retirement accounts, people's retirement accounts. All I'm saying is that we should think of blockchain and cryptocurrency a little bit more broadly than just the promise of Satoshi, right? Like Satoshi gave us one promise, but the technology can give us so much more. And it's like the internet. Yes, the internet does allow us to do a lot of things that we couldn't do before, whether it's sharing files or communicating privately. But that doesn't Gramming mean that our food. <laughs> but that, that doesn't mean that there's no place for the internet in government or in regulation or in investment or in whatever, all kinds of legacy uh, institutions. So I don't necessarily agree that crypto has to be all of crypto has to be unregulated, if that makes sense. Yeah, as usual, here I am sitting here accidentally taking an opposite opinion to Kareem and getting absolutely crushed for it. I don't know <laughs> why. <laughs> if you want to argue with Kareem, you need to research for days and come prepared with with PowerPoint presentation pictures. What did I say the other day on the flagship? I said, well, Kareem, I'm going to disagree with you because I hate myself, and here's the reason why. <laughs> Do you think it would hurt like uh, the international aspect of Bitcoin? Like um, obviously U.S. citizens don't really even need it at all. Um, but to have it to be like regulated in the U.S. and have it be part of a U.S. ETF, like do you think it would hurt people in Argentina who wanted to use it for certain things? I mean, I don't I don't think so. If anything, it would help the value, right? Like even if you're in a country where Bitcoin is unregulated and your entrance and exit to Bitcoin is completely up to you, the fact that there's millions of people in the United States dumping money into Bitcoin for their retirement accounts, I would think is not going to hurt. It should add a lot of long-term stability as well, I would think. I agree. Maybe. It, it, it's in, it, that's an interesting thought experiment, one that we're certainly not qualified to answer, but the the what if too much of the supply ends up being involved in one of the ETFs. And now the, rather than being subject to the price movements of economics of your, of your country or of the world, you're subject to the U S economics. And now, you know, depending on what you think about the current president, the, the people's money is going to change hands and it's mostly controlled in those ETFs. So now what happens to your money is still tied to the United States. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't, I'm not an economist, so I have no idea how that would actually play out. I was just kind of talking without thinking. Yeah. Well, the beautiful thing, though, about something like Bitcoin is that even if we approve it for something like ETFs, there are still people that can freely operate within the network, not under those parameters, right? So, like, let's say that the government says, okay, you can now have a Roth IRA that's Bitcoin. And that entire balance, its value as it grows, you're not going to get taxed on it when you retire and you take it out. That's great. So, I create a Bitcoin address that I'm not allowed to transact out of because it's part of my Roth IRA. And if I do take it out, then they're going to penalize me. Okay. But somebody in anywhere else in the world, or even somebody right here in the United States that wants to create a Bitcoin wallet, open it up, buy whatever they want, sell whatever they want, and move it whenever they want. They could still do that. You see what I'm saying? So overall, I just see it as a positive because they can't stop the people who don't want to participate in the regulation. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, I do agree with that. I think the one thing that you keep forgetting is that how difficult it is for a normal person to go from zero to like owning a Bitcoin wallet and funding it themselves. I mean, it's the whole reason our podcast was born is because the three of us were sick of answering all of our questions for all of our friends about every little detail along the way. I just don't see that particular tilt. Yeah, but, like, but Mike, that's <clears> just a mat like literally just a matter of time, right? But if you go back to 1994, is it difficult to create, start an email address or to, you know, even creating a MySpace profile was difficult because you had to know HTML code. What's going to happen is Facebook made it easy, mm. right? And the same thing is going to happen here in cryptocurrency. Creating a Bitcoin wallet is already way easier than it was five years ago, and it's only going to get easier. Knowledge of cryptocurrency is going to spread. It's going to become easier and easier. So yes, you're right. There are barriers to entry <clears throat> today. They are rapidly being eroded, 
and I expect them to almost completely disappear over time. Yeah, I, I I can agree with that. the The technology is getting it is getting easier and easier. Um, it's te- circling back to that one point one billion that's been stole stolen oh, since the beginning of the year. That is a result of the the difficulties with handling it right now, and of course, that is always going to be uh, one of the reasons to go against mass adoption. So or it, it's yeah. Wait, sorry, I'm getting <laughs> I was getting messages. And, um, never mind. I, I don't even know what I'm saying. Can we talk about poop some more? <laughs> it, it is. It is uh, twelve o'clock, guys. Um, so I, you know, I know we kind of have to start wrapping up. I really enjoyed this. Uh, as a reminder, we're going to be doing this every week, every Tuesday. We are completely open to recommendations, thoughts, feedback. Um, we feel like this is something that we're working on with the cryptocurrency community. Um, we're improvising as we go, and we really want to make this like a like a staple um, of this Discord and and of this community. You know, like we're members of the community before this event happened. So help us make this something cool. And yes, every Tuesday from 11 a.m. until noon Eastern time. Um, so. You know, do the math wherever you are. Minus plus, you guys know the drill. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Mike, Mike just asked in our employee chat whether we are allowed to post our own Discord link in here. I don't know if we are, so I, d- I don't want to do that if that's uh, if that's not cool. So um, the anyway, crypto basic podcast. Mm-hmm. You guys can. <laughs> Yeah, you can. I mean, we're Crypto Basic Podcast. I know our website link was in here at some point. There's links to all our social media, Discord, and all that stuff on there. So, if you if you want to if you want to learn more, if you want to like, you know, send us messages about what you want to talk what you want to talk about in the future. Um, if you wanted to what be somebody who ends up about. speaking, yeah. So, yeah, totally open, guys. Hit us up, and that's Crypto Basic Brand, Crypto Basic Michael, and Crypto Basic Kareem. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this, guys. Really, thank you. Thanks a lot for coming. It was awesome. I don't. I think SPP <clears throat> put it together, but I think he's typing something now. Yeah. Yeah. We we've been working on this with him for a while. This was like uh, I remember this started gestating like months ago. It was really cool. He he responded to one of our one hundred ones on Monero, and uh, <laughs> and we like we got some stuff wrong. So he was like, "Hey, you messed this up," and we're like, "All right, great." So we um, and, and then this we just. Cause this kind of was born out of that chat, so it was really cool. Oh, that's awesome. I think if you guys do want to hang around, um, the room we can probably keep it open, and anyone who's muted might uh, get a little less shy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. <clears throat> like, you mean unmute the entire room? <laughs> well, we used to do that a lot, yeah. But uh, <laughs> people people can be allowed to talk if they want, though. <laughs> <laughs>